Hey everyone, in this video we are going to be going over the logic of mapping and for eaching through things in React code. Now I did this in the props video and I sort of very briefly touched on it, but it's a concept that is fundamental to React and you will be using it a lot. So I just wanted to make its own video, that way you guys get the utmost understanding of it and you have no questions about it moving forward from this point in my series. Now, as you can see here, just like the last video, the destructuring video, I have just a basic code sandbox.io set up with React. Um, we don't need anything too fancy. We don't need to run our own create React app just to illustrate um, what we are doing here. We're just going to use a basic code sandbox sandbox and show you guys some examples of how things work. Now, before I get further into this video, I just want to say I love interacting with you guys thank you so much for all the comments and the feedback as you can see the font size is a lot bigger than the last couple of videos um because i know that's something a lot of you guys ask for and if you find value in this videos please consider leaving that comment um anything you want to see in the future let me know it really helps with the youtube algorithm like the video subscribe turn notifications on so every time i release one of these you can jump on it as soon as possible i love interacting with everyone and i can't thank you enough and it helps so much with the algorithm so with that out of the way let's just get started Started. So the first thing I'm going to do here is create an array of data. Now mapping is pretty much you're going to use it when you have a lot of data and you want to display a component. For this simple use case, um, we are just going to use you know some text and display text dynamically on our uh, screen. In the props example, as you saw, we were displaying entire objects and stuff like that, and we will get to that. So. First of all, let's go ahead and create, like, you know, let's say employ a, a list, uh, an array of employee names. So employees equals, and let's just, you know, have like Anthony and maybe like Kevin and then, you know, maybe like Stephanie and then, you know, uh, maybe one more and let's call him like George or something. Um, so you can see we have an array of employees and let's say we just wanted to display each employee one by one. Well, when I was new to react, I didn't know any better. So the way I did it was for the first employee, you know, I would display the first employee in the list just by referencing it the same way we would reference the first item in a list in any programming language. And then I would have another one of these for every single employee. So you can see in the first place, I'm displaying an H1 tag with the first employee, the zeroth employee in the array. Then I'm repeating that for all four employees until we are displaying it. Now, when you're first learning React, it could be tempting to do things like that. But if you're thinking about it in a best practices point of view or the point of view where I'm going to get an employee list from, you know, an actual backend data source, and it's going to be a lot more than four. And there's no way, let's say if a company has 500 employees, there's no way I'm going to repeat this 500 times. Times, well, that's when you get to the point where you need to use simple mapping and simple lists. So um, first of all, let's talk about the difference in JavaScript between mapping and for eaching. If I were to for each through this, so let's say, you know, uh, employees dot for each and, you know, a simple for each will have, you know, the variable that you want to for each through. So let's call this like an employee and then um, over here we can put our little squiggly braces, or sorry, um, yeah, well, we can put our little squiggly braces and we can say, you know, return, um, and then here, just put like h1 tags with the employee and then end the h1 tags. And we can see here, when we save that, it's actually not going to, um, it's actually not going to display anything. The reason for this is the for each, um, the actual for each method, the difference between for each and map is your map will implicitly automatically return an array of the results inside of it, whereas a for each won't, which is why if we were to straight up just replace this with map, you'll see all of a sudden it works. Oh, let me just uh, put my squiggly tags around it. That way we're actually displaying the employee name. And just so you guys don't get confused, even um, if we switch it back to for each with those squiggly braces, it still won't work. Um, and the reason for that is, like I said, when you map through something in JavaScript, the map operator will actually return an array of whatever was returned inside of it. So in this case, what is actually happening is this map is going to return an array of HTML nodes 
And each one of them is going to be an H1 tag with the employee name inside of it with the um, closing tag for that H1. And this is probably the simplest application of the map function and looping that there is in React. Now, there's a little short, cool little shorthand I want to show you guys that you might see elsewhere. And I don't want you guys to be, um, you know, like, what, what the heck is this? This isn't what I'm used to when it comes to mapping. And what it is is, as you can see here, this whole function is just, all we're doing in the function is just returning. If you have functions where the only thing you are doing in that function is returning, you can actually, instead of you know having squiggly braces and then typing return and then what you are returning, you can simplify this by just, instead of having squiggly braces, having circular braces, so parentheses, and then get getting rid of the return that you have in there. Um, and you, oh, it looks like I missed, I accidentally deleted another one. So as you can see here, this function is going to just link to um, a straight up HTML node. Um, and you can see, and this is for arrow functions in general. If you just have an arrow function that has a circle brace instead of a squiggly brace, everything you put inside of there will um, pretty much just be what you are actually returning. And um, um, this is pretty common in JavaScript. You'll see people, depending on how in-depth you have to go into the function, interchange between the two methods. Now, let's get a bit more complex. Let's say, for example, all of a sudden, instead of just having an array of strings, for each employee, I want to display more than just one thing. Each employee is actually an object. Now, let's go ahead and uh, delete what we have here and make an object. So, you know, Let's say in this object, the name of the employee will be, we're going to have the name and let's say like the ID of the employee. So let's say the name and ID for this employee is Anthony and ABC. Well, now this isn't simply going to work because this is no longer just a string that we can simply output. This is an entire object. Let's go ahead and make objects for the rest of the people in our uh, employee list really quickly. So l let's just do three just to keep it a bit simple and clean. Let's have George and Stephanie. Let's make George's, you know, uh, like uh, CBA or something. And then Stephanie's employee like SDE. I don't know. Something random. Now, if we wanted to display the names for each employee, we can just simply refer to it by employee.name, for example. And you can see we have all the employee names. Now comes to the cool part. You can actually nest entire components um, and you know big lists inside of uh, this employee map that we are returning here. So let's start, for example, we can wrap all our H1 things in divs. And then what we can do is we can, um, you know, have not only the employee name, but also the employee ID in here. And let's make, you know, this a bit smaller. Let's make all these H6s so they sort of group together a bit better. You can see Anthony, ABC, George, CBA. But let's really, to top it all off, use, combine this with string interpolation. So I can go ahead, for example, um, put my backticks and then say name and then wrap this around and then, you know, ID and then, you know, uh, put uh, employee dot ID and refer to it like that. So now for every single employee in this list, we are going to be displaying this div with this H6 tag and all um, whatever we want to display inside of it for every single employee. And that is known as sort of mapping through things in JavaScript. Now, let's say I wanted to, you know, let's say you just came from my last video and you're like, oh man, I don't want to use employee.name. I want to do destructuring. Well, if you want to do stuff outside of the return, you would could switch instead of having that circly braces, let's switch it back to the squiggly braces. Let's wrap all our JSX inside of a return. And now in here, we can treat everything above this return in between the squiggly brace as a regular JavaScript function. So, um, and to be honest, a regular component. I can go ahead and, you know, um, type, you know, const, let's destructure the name and the ID from the actual employee object. And now in here, instead of doing employee.name, I can just do name and I can just put ID and you'll see that it works just the same. Now, all of this logic that I have in here, 
what you should be doing, uh, ideally you don't want to have too much logic for best practices, um, you would want to put this in its own component and map through it like that. So let's go ahead, and I illustrated this in the props um, video, but just for a quick refresher, let's go ahead, let's make the employee.jsx, you know, thing. Let's import, let's make a basic component, so we're going to import React from React. We're going to type export, or, or sorry, const, and then the actual name of the thing, um, oops, the actual name of our component, and let's export default employee. Now we can just simply move all of this stuff, whoop, just like that, pop that in here, and now we can just take props. we will be getting these variable from props like we saw in the previous video and now all I have to do is I can remove these squiggly braces and just in here let's import our employee really quick import employee from dot slash employee we're import we're importing the component that we just created now we're just gonna you know pass in the component we can say name equals employee dot name and then uh, the ID equals employee.id. And let's go ahead and close these tags. And there you go. Now we are mapping through our own custom component. And we can do this. And, and the good part about this is if you have a lot of data, this is being dynamically done. So you don't have to worry about for every employee copying and pasting a new employee tag. This is the way that you should be doing it. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about here is what you want is, sorry, my cats are going nuts in the background, but what you can also do here is when you do a map, um, a lot of the times React will sort of yell at you because if we go ahead and um, let's refresh this. Is there any way to, here we go. Console is cleared and let's go ahead and refresh this. So you will see when you are using maps, um, you will get an error or a warning in React saying that each child in a list should have a unique key prop. And what this essentially means is the top level thing for your map must have a unique identifier for React. And a lot of the times, you know, you, you know, in our data, we have an ID and it's sort of, you know, we can sort of assume that the ID for each employee will be the same. You're not going to get an employee with the same ID as another employee. So to get rid of this, you can just go ahead and assign a key and make that key equal to, you know, employee.id, for example. Um, and you'll see here, if I were to clear the console and refresh it, we won't get that annoying error anymore. And this has to be on the top level of whatever you are returning. So let's say, for example, if I instead, if I wrapped our employee object in a div, so let's go ahead and just wrap it in some div components, you'll see here, um, if I were to clear the console and refresh this, I still get that error. It is because it wants the key to be at the top level of um, the top level component of wherever you are displaying it. So now if I were to clear the console and go ahead and refresh this, you'll see um, it goes away. And that is pretty much the gist of, uh, you know, basic looping uh, when it comes to mapping in uh, React. You will see this on, in a lot of applications. You will use this in a lot of applications. And in the projects we are going to do later on in this course, you will see that this right here is a absolutely um, plays an absolutely pivotal role when it comes to React development. So if you found value in this video, I would love it if you left a uh, comment or liked the video, subscribe, turn notifications on for the next videos. It helps with the algorithm so much, and I will see you guys in the next video.